Good evening, you're very welcome to The Daily Rundown with me, Fiona Fox. Now, this is the show where we look at all of the day's big stories. Uh, tonight we'll be discussing who's who in the new Conservative Cabinet and later we'll be talking to the minds behind Concrete Jungle. That's a new play that's going to be at the Greater Manchester Fringe. But first, let's welcome tonight's guests. We're going to supply The Daily Rundown with insight and opinion this evening. It's author Ian Pattinson. Hello, Hello. Ian. And returning to his comfy spot on the couch it's comedian Tom Short as well hello Tom hi how are you how are you two gentlemen this evening very well thank you it's the last daily rundown so we want to have a nice kind of relaxed chill almost the weekend except there's lots of politics to talk about to be fair though so I don't know how we're going to manage to get this balance can you help me we'll just shout <laughs> really the pol political situation in this country it's either we spend the next hour and a half curled up in little balls sobbing <laughs> or uh, well we use language that, isn't appropriate even after the waters yet. No, 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 no. Not or we try desperately to make jokes. All right, okay. Well, then Tom, Tom should that, be That's what I'm there for. Yeah. Tom's hilarious, aren't you, Tom? Um, uh, uh, my mum says I am. Oh, oh, very good. Uh, you guys at home can get involved as well. Don't forget, we're as interactive as you can get. Join in on the conversation at the Daily Rundown, or at the very least, you can give us a little follow and see what we've been going on about. Uh, we might follow you back if you're lucky. Right, let's go to our first story this evening. Prime Minister Theresa May is forming her new government. Government. So we're going to go through the appointments and departures and we're going to get Ian and Tom's opinion on them as well. The big news is that Theresa May has appointed Boris Johnson as Foreign Secretary. He led the campaign for the UK to leave the EU, you may remember. This is his first government position and it's a big promotion for the former London Mayor, but he won't be dealing with the EU exit alone. Theresa May has also appointed David Davis as the Secretary of State for exiting the EU and Liam Fox has been appointed as Secretary of State for International Trade. Now, the response from the international community has been varied. American magazines reminded readers that just two months ago, Boris Johnson won a poetry prize. The poem was about the Turkish president having sexual intercourse with a goat. So are we shocked? Are we shocked by this appointment? Or do we think it's a clever move, gentlemen? It's kind of a lot to cover. Um, we might get stuck on Boris here. There's kind of a lot of angles to come from with this one. What, what, what's, what do you think she's thinking? That's the first one I've got to say Prime Minister Theresa May as well today. But what do you think the Prime Minister's thinking appointing Boris? Maybe she's hoping that he'll take it as an excuse to uh, go to all these foreign countries and stay out of her hair. <laughs> Just <laughs> leave, go away, go, go, do, do a world insulting to her <laughs> and she'll get on with running the country. It is, it's an odd one, isn't it? I mean, how do you feel... Um, from even a serious point of view, like is, is, is Boris who we want out there kind of representing us to with the rest of the world or anywhere? Um, I personally think that Boris has got, he is fully aware of how he comes across. You know, he's, he's done things like, have I got news for you? And you know, other, you know, very large entertainment shows. And I think he does have his eye on the ball where, how he is you know, presented and how he presents himself is concerned. Uh, so I, it wouldn't surprise me if it was from from a standpoint of he can present himself well, um, you know, when whenever it is called upon him. You know, he, he was London Mayor for eight years. You know, that doesn't happen just by fluke, does it? Well, we did, we, we did ha uh, speak about Boris um, Johnson in that way in the last year. So I think, you know, we've had mixtures of guests here. And um, a lot of the time it comes up, He's got this lovable, harmless, rogue sort of it's thing going an on, act. hasn't he? But this is the this, think, is, you, you, this is what we've realised, obviously, and you know, obviously, in the in the run up to the referendum, um, I don't know how many people would still agree with the harmlessness or the kind of charming, that affable kind he, of buffoonery. Apparently, reports from his mayorship and from his, uh, his private life and everything else, he's not great on details. He doesn't like to actually do the work. He does, he's really good on big ideas and trying to inspire people and, and being the buffoon with the stupid hair. But he doesn't, he's not really so good on details. Um, it seems to be one of the recurring themes that comes up about all of his previous jobs, his appointments and stuff. And uh, he'll, he's, he's a, he's a professional um, opinion 
writer. He writes, he's got all these columns, which is where a lot of all of the stupid things he said have come from. He's been paid for years and years and years just to make stuff up mm. that he thinks will appeal to whatever his current audience is. And uh, he, he's probably not as, he's, he's probably a lot more savvy than he appears. But I don't think he's the great tactician that he thinks he is. So where do you think uh, Theresa May is coming from, them uh, pop, popping him in the, into that there's, spot? The, there's been a couple of uh, ideas on that one. It's, one of them is she's giving the job of leaving the EU to three people who were prominent in the Leave campaign. Yeah. And so there's a certain extent where if it goes horribly wrong, she can point at them and go, look, well, they wanted it, they campaigned for it, they said they knew what they were going to do, and they didn't. And she's kind of covering herself on that point, that front, and the, just within her own party as much as anything else, mm. which is a, it, not great for the rest of us. If what she's doing is she's giving them room to fail just so that she can have a, an easy life as prime minister, that doesn't speak well of her thoughts about, about the rest of us. Sure. Um, what do you think, Tom? Um, how, what would your feelings be on, or what would your faith, how, how would it affect your faith in Theresa May with this appointment? Um, well, the thing is, I've not gone into it with a lot of faith, to be honest with you. In the first place. Yeah, because... No faith to lose. Yeah, like, I do honestly think that, you know, some people, not all of them, some people voted to leave the EU because they were unhappy with the undemocratic process of the EU. And now, all of a sudden, within their own country, they've got a prime minister that no one voted for at all. So I'm feeling quite um, disenfranchised however, by the fact that this is happening. 160 Tory MPs chose, or, or however many it was, who actually voted for a, chose our Tory, a, our current Prime Minister. Yeah, because it never went to an actual proper party vote. It never even went to a mem membership vote, vote no. Yeah. So yeah, it, I find it quite disappointing that that's happened. In the first place? Yeah, so because... Know. So as far as decisions go along the way, you're not... Yeah, I find it quite frustrating that, that uh, everyone got so vocal in the lead up to leaving the EU and post, you know, the first couple of days post leaving the EU and then something that's the exact same point as some people were making and then there seems to be no, no vocal outcry about it and I find that quite disappointing. So I'm not going into this particular government with, with much hope. I'm sure that, that it, right, in my eyes it's even going to go one of two ways. She will be, she'll prove everyone wrong and she'll be quite popular because she's a socialist conservative. Um, so she'll appeal to some of the left and to the Conservatives, or um, Brexit being the quite toxic political thing that it is, will topple her and we'll have another Prime Minister. That, that's the two things that I can see happening. Interesting. I get the feeling Brexit is going to come back and back and back <clears throat> and overshadow almost everything. Well, it's going to take at least five to six years until everything's sorted. Yeah. And we're, we're still kind of in the aftermath anyway, aren't we? I mean, there's still kind of a sense of obviously unsettlement and that type of thing. And this is this this uh, cabinet shift is going to sort of further feed that, I guess, isn't it? Things aren't going to settle down until the the party uh, the the um, the party conventions at the very late, at very earliest. Yeah. Probably not even then, given the way that uh, Labour are desperately trying to destroy themselves. <laughs> oh yeah, that's very frustrating as well, isn't it? They, they had the perfect moment to just rally behind. They may not like their leader, but he's he, he he's spent the his whole political career presenting a definite, absolute opposite to the Conservatives. They had the right moment, the prime moment, to, to stand behind this man, push him a little bit to, to to up his game when it comes to his speeches and stuff, and just drive drive the knife home and, and just totally destroy the reputation of the Conservatives. And what do they do? They uh, implode. Yeah. destroyed their own reputation. They implode. Yeah. It is interesting. Isn't it? I think even just, just to hold it together would have been enough yeah. for these few weeks. But yeah, it's interesting. But we, we, we have actually covered that. Just to go back to Boris, um, how do you think it makes us kind of look around the world, the appointment of him as Foreign Secretary? We've insulted the Europeans a lot in oh. the last month. <laughs> so now we've, now we've just got Boris in place to insult the rest of the world. <laughs> Tom, you're not a Boris fan yeah. anyway. Uh, yeah, I think, you know how if, if, the, if the world was a TV station, I'm sure that most, most uh, countries are switching away from the UK right now. They're going, oh God, this off. Is, this is the point at which the joke stopped being funny. 
Yeah, they're just going, are you actively trying to look stupid? It, it, but it, it does look bad. I mean, I know we can all laugh at it. And, and, I mean, it's, it's not funny, but, you know, we can make light of it or whatever. But it does look bad, given that there is, you know, that kind of history of, uh, you know, gaffes and insults. Going back to the television, I'll, I'll, I'll agree. It's, uh, this, is, this is We Are Jumping the Shark. Completely jumping the shark with Boris as the Foreign Secretary. We've just gone too far. <laughs> this is it's a fine straw for you now, isn't it? It's just, uh, for, from here on in, nothing we do is believable. We've, uh, we, uh, all of the viewers have lost entire faith in the characters who are running this place. Can we just reboot and just... Well, have, have you tried to have another go? Back on again? Yeah. You want to go and press that big red button and hit the reset? Yeah, just, you know, around about... You don't want to save changes. You just want to about back to the beginning. Factory, factory settings. I'm happy with about 98. Why 98? Uh, well, things could only get better, as the song said. And we hadn't yet invaded, invaded anybody. Yeah, we hadn't invaded anyone, the, the left-wing socialist of oh, yeah. the... There was no Pokemon Go, though. Uh, no, well, well, there was red and blue, though. <laughs> you know, the originals. Red versus blue. Yeah. <laughs> Not the most mystic stuff. <laughs> All You've right. lost me with Pokemon, I haven't got a clue. Don't worry, uh, Ian, I was only throwing that in as a, you know, a little soundbite. I honestly <laughs> have not got a clue what everybody's talking about. We probably could have had a whole, we had, we could have people in here talk about the whole show, but it seems to be about nothing. I'm not really sure. You might have to fill us in on that one on the break, Tom. Perhaps. Yes. Are you, are, do you have the app? Uh, I, I cannot download apps for a very boring reason, uh, but I am aware of it. I right. do know how it works and it, you know, it is, it basically Nintendo have given uh, people are reason to be in dark alleys and go, this is not a drug deal. This is not a drug deal. This is not what it looks like. I'm Jeepers. catching a squirtle. I'm not scratching. Um, what I'm catching is catching not a, what you're catching. Catching a squirtle does sound like a euphemism. Catching it does. a squirtle. Well, from <laughs> Bojo to squirtle. So guys, thanks very much for that. That's the first part of the show over and done with already. We're going to take our first break. We'll be back in just a few minutes. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> 